All right, uh, I'm Bridget Malasso, and we're here today with Coach Brent Lax. Uh, I have three players with me, McKenzie, KK, and Madison, and we're just going to go through three basic skills of volleyball. So let's get started. We're going to do a quick little warm-up that's just going to get them moving and get their feet shuffling correctly and working on body position. And Coach and I will just kind of be monitoring the body position we're looking for. So let's have McKenzie on the red line. Yeah. So show us um, athletic position for just like ready position. Is that ready like to move any direction? Okay, so it's not too low, it's, it's buoyant, it's bouncy, it's ready to go in any direction. Um, so let's show them how we shuffle. So we're gonna shuffle by keeping our, we're not crossing our feet, keeping our body low and our shoulders forward. So that movement is what we're gonna work on with our partners. So you just keep an eye on them, make sure that their body position is correct. If you wanna use two players together, if you two will take one ball, one of you sit, and remember this is our net, so we want to, work this direction. So one of you sit, one of you is shuffling. So what we want her to do is to create a visual space for the defender to work on shuffling and it needs to be manageable. So if they're smaller kids, their legs are going to be smaller and so their shuffle will be smaller, right? If they're bigger kids, they'll kick out a little farther and their range will get bigger. So Madison is going to distance herself from here. KK is going to, you can widen your stretch. KK is going to use her leg to push the ball right here so that Madison is meeting the ball, center of her body, and square back to KK. She's trying to send the ball directly back to the center of KK and then she'll shuffle the other direction. So let's see if we can do this. So she's going to push, open palm, gentle fingers, not so fast, KK. As your partner starts to, to go faster, you can move the ball a little faster. Okay, so the two of them theoretically would then switch places. So y'all keep doing that, um, and I'm gonna show you how the coach might do it. So if I have a player, I'm, I might take a knee, and um, I'm gonna push her to her ability. So I only send the ball as fast as they are. So she's gonna shuffle. Right now she's gonna back away from me a little bit. You're a little close. She has great footwork and she's fast, so I need to give her a little more challenge. I'm gonna push her away from me. I need you to kick out that last leg a little bigger and make sure you're turning to me. Um, freeze for one second, you girls. Um, I want to see if Madison is squaring her body back up to her partner. So I want to see if she's, stop, freeze. See how number six, stay where you are, that was frozen. Number six, see how her body is actually turned and her toes are facing her partner, that's what we want. So when she goes again, I want to see if her body is turned the other direction toward KK. So go, shuffle, 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 and freeze. See how her toes, is she lined up, Brent? I'm not over there. All right, so let's see her do it like two or three times and see if she's squaring back up. Do it um, normal pace, girls. Normal pace, Madison, normal pace. Push, shuffle, square, good. So that's what we're looking for with McKenzie. I'm looking to see that her toes, her knees, and her shoulders are pushing back to me. Big, there we go. I'm gonna go a little, push it to me a little faster. There you go. Notice we don't really hear the ball they're sending back to me. What they don't realize is we're working on the setting contact right now with their hands. This is the actual fingertip touch that we want that's real silent. All right, we good? Am I wearing y'all out? All right, stand up. All the drills we do, once I leave you, you can switch just like you're at practice, okay? Um, so now we're gonna do the same drill adding the platform and all that. And this is just warm up, or their warm up drills. So she's gonna do the same shuffling. I'm doing the same job. Instead of rolling it, I'm gonna be tossing it. So she's not really sending me power. It's just about footwork and lining the ball up to center her body. I'm gonna to toss that direction first. You ready? So boom, boom. And Brent, it's checking her feet because I'm watching the ball and he's watching her toes. Did she square up that time? All right, she's doing a great job, okay. Those are just some warm-up drills we can do. All right, so we're gonna move on to how we pass and what actual passing form is. The hardest part about passing and learning to pass is that people in general think that when I'm passing, I'm making the ball go somewhere. And it's really important to understand the ball's already coming at you, you're redirecting it, you're calming it, and you're changing its path. So we don't actually pass with our arms, we pass with our lower body. And we use our arms as a platform to change direction. Sometimes there will be a little movement, but the arms are not what passes. 
Okay, so let's start with how we hold our hands. There's several ways to hold your hands. The most important thing is to never interlock the thumbs. Um, we want them side by side so that they're an even platform. Um, some coaches teach one fist surrounded by another fist. My thumbs are side by side and then the thumbs push down. When my thumbs push down, it causes my shoulders to shrug and my platform to firm. I teach palm up, palm up, thumbs together and push down. I call it pancake, pancake, butter, butter push down and what it does is it gives them a little bit more of a flat one and then I personally do a semi locking where my hands kind of just touch and push down so can you show them what type of platform you do so she does what I do more of a pancake pancake don't cross your thumbs side by side yep and then and what I want to show you is I want all of you to hold your platform out and as coaches one thing you want to do show me your ready position with your legs Okay, um, what we don't want is them sitting back on their heels. So a lot of times I'll make them touch the ground and then without lifting the body back up, we wanna press forward. So we want them feeling like they're tipping so that they could catch themselves. Okay, and relax a second, I'm gonna wear them out. All right, so show him your platform and your legs are in ready position. All right, what I wanna show you as a coach is oftentimes you'll see a kid with um, a little bend. You wanna remind them that the thumbs go down and you do that by pulling them. When I pull her thumbs down, it makes her shrug. So just relax a little bit. So what right here, if I just push her thumbs down, see how her platform got strong and her shoulders shrugged? That's what we want. All right, are you re relaxed? Shake them out. All right, um, so when we, Pass the ball, we wanna make sure it's centered with our body and we wanna square up to what we call our target. We have a designated spot that we always pass the ball. We want to be consistent with that spot. Um, so what we're gonna do is, what we did before was working on squaring up to target, but we want to show them how we use our legs to make the ball move and not our arms, okay? So we don't want to drop our arms low and then swing them up high. And this is the most common way people teach passing and it's wrong. <laughs> so if we drop our arms, in order to get to the ball, we have to lift up. And when we do that, we put spin on the ball. We want to send a ball that floats without rotation on it. So ready position, arms are out. And I want you to imagine that you have to dip for a ball and lift it up. And let's see if we can imagine passing a ball to target. Let me see how it looks, all of you. So I'm gonna dip and lift. Okay, so I want you to watch Madison, um, Madison do it again. Dip, lift. Do you notice, keep doing it as I'm talking. Do you notice that as she does it, her bottom half goes below the imaginary ball, keep doing it as I'm talking, and her arms are not dropping and moving. Now when I add a real ball, you will see a shrug or a pop from her arms, but it's not substantial. Okay, you can stop. One of the ways to identify or to help kids understand they're doing it when they might not know is to have kids put their arms out in front of them in ready position and then have them lower their arms until they can't see them anymore. So I'm looking straight and, uh, and lower them to a point where you can't see them. If you cannot see your arms, they're too low. So now raise up and as soon as you see the arms in your vision, that is the lowest your arms should ever be. So now I know that even if I run a ball down, when I drop to pass, I shouldn't have my arms out of my vision. It's about right here. Are we good? All right, we're gonna um, show you some simple ways to get their platform and their body language correctly before we actually step on the court and start passing the ball. So the first thing we want them to understand is how to hold their body. And so I want you to get in your um, passing ready position, not defense, just passing, like their serve is coming. Where would you be on serve receive? More up here, right? Tapping it out, athletic. All right, you two can relax for a sec. Um, what I want to show you is sometimes a kid will sink down this way to pass. They're in their heels and then that ball is gonna go up. So in volleyball, we want our bottom to go one way and our arms to go the other way. So she gets in ready position and one way we can help them feel that position is when I pull you by your arms, I don't want you to let me, don't walk forward. So hold your ground, your weight will go into your toes and watch how her bottom went backwards. Okay, stand up and relax again. So ready position. 
don't let me make you take a step. So I, first I'm gonna take her wrist, turn her platform down, and then I'm gonna pull her. And I want you to notice how her bottom went backwards. And now her weight is on her toes, moving okay. forward, and that's what we want. So what we're gonna do is, He's gonna kind of help me evaluate those things the whole time we're passing. Are they extended? Did they pull their bottom in? We don't want the hips to come forward. Are they extended? Is there weight into their toes? Are they dropping their arms? Is their platform right? So those are the things we're looking for as coaches as we go through these drills and we just keep reminding them. So the first thing you're gonna do is sit on the bench and they're not really sitting like they're watching a game. They're gonna kind of go to the end of the bench and they're, it's gonna be like, okay, if I had to pass and come off the bench, do you see how far I am? So find that comfortable position where if I needed to touch the ground, I wouldn't be touching, but if I needed to fall back, I would. So we're gonna check their feet. They're gonna pass within the frame of their knees. So we, I'm glad she did that. We don't want knees that go in. Some kids do that. Get them comfortable. Um, what we wanna ask them to do, so all three of you do it, is I want you to, with two hands, use your fingertips to touch the floor in front of your toes. Now I want you to lift your arms, but not your body. Okay, when they, okay, y'all can relax. They've done with this, this with me a bunch, so they're doing it correctly. A, a lot of kids, it will take several times to keep this from happening. Now lift your arms. No, just your arms. No, lift your arms. You know, they'll do this like several times. So what you do in that situation is, touch the ground in front of you. You put your hand right here and you say, now lift your arms. Okay, come off the bench. Okay, lift your arm, touch the ground, lift your arms. Because sometimes they start to rise right here and that's what we're trying to avoid. Okay, so this is the hard part, the coaching part. <laughs> Tossing the right ball takes time, but the main thing is we want them reaching forward. So we don't wanna toss a ball that causes get in your position to pass. We, we don't wanna give her a toss that causes her to do this because this is what we're trying to not teach. So if you, what I do is I visualize tossing in front of their reach. So Mackenzie's gonna to touch the ground, come off the bench, I don't want you on it, okay? And I'm gonna to toss a ball that she has to reach for. She is not passing the ball, she is literally putting her platform out there and giving me a nudge with her lower body. So she's gonna reach and push. I don't want a big sky ball, I just wanna see that she's, Thumbs down when you, yep. Oh, that was a bad toss. Saw how I got it too close to her, she had to pop up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just get them into this motion. A good way to do it when you have a large group, if you're like one person or two people, is I would do this, if you'll watch for one second. Say I have like a bunch of kids. I would just go toss, toss, <laughs> toss. Um, when they're older, you can partner them and they can toss one another, but you often find that they're tossing the ball hard. It's not fixing the problem. So that's gonna depend on your group. So what we're gonna do is just kinda take turns, tossing and looking, making sure the thumbs are pressed down. We're not, and, you're, and they can be on the seat. They can be touching it a little. We just don't want them sitting back on it. That was a bad toss. I'm making her reach, making her reach. Okay. One thing I want to point out that none of them did wrong, so I didn't think to correct it. Sometimes when you first put them in this position, they want to keep their feet back, so they're like this. You want to make sure that their toes are forward. They can have one slightly in front of the other, but not like one back here. That's a little too much. So we kind of want to, you know, a wider than shoulder, toes in front. You just want to look out for this. Um, I would like all of you, you have your knee pads on? Um, all of you put one foot forward and take a knee. Yeah. Right where you are, just take one knee. Fix your knee pad so you're on your knee pad. All right, we're gonna do the same drill we just did, but you're gonna have one knee. So this is, think of the foot you like to lead with when you pass. For passing, it doesn't matter which toe is slightly in front of the other. What you don't want is a drastic. And said in passing, it's not gonna matter which foot is forward. All right, so what I'm checking right now is that she's passing in her toe range. If you reach forward and touch the ground like you just did in that drill with your hands, remember? Yeah, like we just did in the chair. You reach in front of your toes. All right, you do it too. See how Madison's leg is turned out? We wanna make sure she's a little more straight. Good, this is that one, y'all can get back up, where they tend to do this. Yeah, and we wanna make sure that if, she, put it back where it was, if she were to reach forward that we fix her foot so that she's coming in front of her foot like this. All right, so it's the same drill. 
I want to put her hands on the ground and get her to reach so I as coach visually know how far to pull her. And she needs to keep her shoulders down, arms up, shoulders down. Arms up, shoulders down, good. You can just toss to both of them. Arms up, shoulders down. KK, don't drop your arms. Brent, watch her for that. Good, Mackenzie's isolating that arm movement. Now we're not able to put a whole lot of power onto it. We're limiting their range right here. Good, these are perfect. Good, I want you to notice Mackenzie keeps her arms up. She doesn't drop them. Good, good. Again, I can ask coach, go through each kid, pass, 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 however you want to do it to um, make this drill effective. You can reach a lot of kids like this. Um, any drill you can do where they become partners and you flip flop it is great if they're tossing and being the, the good uh, you know, coach when it's their turn. All right, so me as a coach, I'm a big proponent of teaching them to move when they pass as early as you teach them to pass. So the drills that we just did is about all the time we wanna do stationary. Notice the stationary drills I did, they were either seated like locked into a spot with a small zone. They weren't trying to pass to a target. They were just working on form. They took a knee, we were just working on form. Any time I now am focusing on the place that I wanna pass the ball, which we call our target, I move them because what I learned in my past coaching is when you teach kids stationary passing they never move their feet so I teach all of my all of my drills even starting at like eight years old I move them as I teach them how to pass constantly move them from left to right right to left or deep to short or short to deep so that's what we're gonna do right now there's two drills that you can manipulate in a dozen ways but this is the basic concept behind it. So this yellow circle, this, this blue screen is our net. This yellow circle, Brent, you be the middle blocker and just put your hands at the net. So to visualize, we have a middle blocker here. We have a right side blocker here, right? So those, and then there's a third kind of near that orange cone. So those are our three front row players. So if those players were to back off the net to become hitters, the setter is going to come right here. Okay? This area we call target. <clears throat> and we always, always strive to pass the first ball in this target. There's nobody here. She's coming from somewhere. So here we really have to trust one another and we have to stay true to the system that we're putting in place. Even though nobody is here, this is where we trust they will be. So we do all of our passing drills to a target. Sometimes I use a dot, sometimes I use, um, we have an, a big net um, that hangs that has an opening at the top and we put a basket under it, collect balls, however you wanna do it. If you have someone that can be still, you can put them here and have them put their hand up. So just so y'all understand the framing, this is where we want to pass the ball and we will call it target. So us three, all we're focused on right now is getting their footwork going. So right now, we're just trying to pass, use our pro proper platform and pass directly to the person that's tossing the ball. We're just getting them moving. But after that, as soon as we see that they're moving properly, we're gonna shift to using that target. So all you're gonna do is shuffle. He'll toss, I'll toss, KK will toss. KK, we're just tossing a straight ball like that. You're straight to yourself, I'm straight to myself. So as soon as you pass, your eyes will go to the next ball, your eyes will go to the next ball, and then you will run back around and do it again. Obviously, you would do this drill with more girls so that you don't wear them out. You can do your whole, you know, half of your team and have the other half shagging, which is what we call collecting all the balls for the coaches. See, right now I only have two coaches, but I have a helper, so she's my coach, my assistant right now. So we're just gonna show them how the footwork is. Right now, when they pass the ball, they lift with their lower body, their top should be fairly stationary, and their toes, hips, wrist, and shoulders should line up to the coach that tossed it to them, okay? Let's see how they go. She'll run around, now theoretically, we would have another six or so kids in that group. Good, I feel um, like when you have a large group, it's better to group them into smaller uh, groups so that they get lots of repetition at once. For example, y'all can stop now. For example, I think it's more beneficial to have a group of six kids doing this. One, they're conditioning, it's pushing them to move faster. If you have 20 kids in a line, you get a lot of 
walk into the line. Um, so like six would probably, or six or eight would be a good number where they're constantly shuffling and going around and then you flip to another group of eight, flip to another group of eight. I found that to be more beneficial than feeding a, a large group through the same drill. All right, do we feel comfortable with that? So after we do that, <clears throat> we're gonna go to that same sideline and KK is gonna join them. Again, I would have roughly six to eight kids in a line. And if you can visualize, this is the sideline of the court. I want them to have their foot on the sideline and they're gonna be shuffling this direction. So, this is what I'm looking for in my players. When I shuffle, I want my body to face target, right? We do this in practice all the time. So, target never moves but I do and the ball does. So if you see right now, I'm lined up to that hula hoop, my toes, my knees, my hips. As I shuffle, I continue to face right there. Depending on where the ball is, depends on where my body is. So I always square up straight to my target, even though I'm receiving the ball from all directions. So what I want you to do is I want y'all to do one quick shuffle without the ball where your whole body faces the hula hoop so that they can see how your body would have to turn as you now pass target and go to the sideline. So Mackenzie, go. She's shuffling toward target. <clears throat> her toes, her hips, her knees are square. Notice when she keeps going, she wraps the other direction. Freeze. So let's have Madison follow my, my auditory directions, okay? She's facing her target. I want you to go forward pass. Forward, 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 left, left, um, to me, stop, freeze. See how she, she sh you shuffled this way? Yeah. All right, so she knows what she did wrong, right? So as she shuffled to the left, she then lost her focus over there. So I'm gonna let you do it again, because I know you know how to do it, right? Yeah. So what we wanna do is watch her, remember left, right, forward, back, okay? Right, right, shuffle right, shuffle right, forward, Deep, keep your shoulders down, good, stop. Shuffle to the right, 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 left and forward, left and forward, left and forward, freeze. Good, excellent. Okay, okay, shuffle forward to the right. Short right, short right, like right front, go toward right front. Shuffling, shuffling, turning, keep going toward right front, keep going, turn your body, good. See how close she got? She still had to turn to target. So that's the goal and what we are trying to do every time we pass the ball for every drill. Now, everybody on the left sideline, you're gonna be the target. Yep. All right, so I'm gonna use a coach as a target because he's visual and he can speak to them and he can put their hand up. Um, in practice, when girls are target, I encourage them to, to stand on that dot and be like, right here, pass me right here and give them a hand. I'm right here, I'm right here. Um, this drill, I call circle drill because <clears throat> they go in a giant circle. Um, when you're starting with younger ones, you wanna be closer. I'm gonna go over here. This is the net, correct? So I'm close to them. There's a big difference in passing a ball that I toss from here and on the other side. So eventually you want to be on the other side, sending free balls or even overhand hits at your team. This drill can be from baby basic, brand new, all the way to highly advanced. You could even, as a coach, stand on a box on the other side and give yourself some, some height. All right, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna toss to her. Because I'm looking at the ball, it's harder for me, well, because I'm looking at them and the next person and running the drill, it's harder for me to see if they square. But when I put a coach there, he should be able to see them so, and remind them if they're not square as they run around. So they're shuffling, squaring up. Use your legs, not your arms. Legs, not arms. Are you square? Good. Next. Okay, let's come back on that one. Mackenzie, go back. I don't know if you could see in the video, but as she moved her feet this direction, she, she wasn't in, the ball wasn't in the frame of her body, so she reached out and shrugged. When you see that, you wanna encourage them to take that extra step so everything's in a straight line. So we're gonna try that again, see if you can um, square up your whole body so that you can pass a straight line. I don't want any um, shifting on the top of the arms, ready? So she's gonna shuffle, shuffle, square, push. Do you see how she froze and her platform froze? That's what we're looking for. All right, now, you're gonna say mine, one, two, and you're gonna freeze on one, two. Would you like me to demonstrate? Yes. Go toss, I will be the player for a minute. 
Uh, the reason I am doing this is because they often don't know where their platform finishes. And we don't want a high platform that's out of control. We want to calm the ball. So what I want to see is you call the ball mine. Got your square. And when your platform touches the ball, I'm going to go one, two. And when I say one, two, I can't move. Then I can go. So the next person should have no problem being ready because she froze for two whole seconds. So don't toss me too low. Give me a nice easy ball. So I'm gonna, an easy, I'm gonna mine. One, two. Do you see how I froze? Let's try that again. Mine. One, two. Okay, then I go off. Next person runs on. We got that? Let's see how our platforms look. Mine. Stop. Go back there. Look at that foot. It was. That's, that's the reason we do the freeze. So it looked like this. Yeah. Do, real, do the best you can to freeze your whole body. Okay, see how we had a turn? So now we adjust it. Let's fix it. Yes, okay, so now they feel that change happening. All right, next. Stop. Uh, left foot, you did it as you passed. Yeah, go again. Now Mackenzie has a challenge a personal challenge, which I had to. She's not very vocal and she needs to be. And so she's got to have to bust out of that shell and get comfortable with it. I want a nice firm mind and then say one, two. So I know that you're frozen and you're processing. And guys, when you're saying one, two, you're looking at yourself. Am I right? Am I here? Am I here? But you're still frozen, okay? Let's hear it, Mackenzie. Freeze, good, okay? Stop, look at your feet, fix them. Very good. Now go again and see if you can do that before contact. Ready? That was better, let's do it again. It's okay, you took your eye off the ball for just a sec. We wanna watch it all the way in. Good, nice square toes, facing target. All right, do we understand that drill? All right, so the circle drill we run left to right and then we also can run it from deep to short to work on forward movement. Hurry, hurry, hurry. All right, so in reality, I, don't, I only do the stop, count, freeze when I notice there's something that needs to be addressed. As the game gets faster, I want them getting as many touches as possible, so I'll run it more like this. I got it. Everyone should have shoulders down before their turn. Your shoulders should be down before your turn starts. All right, now we're gonna do one that's a little harder and that's moving backwards. Number one mistake of moving backwards in volleyball is this. The butt went in, the hips came forward, and my shoulders came up. So in volleyball, this is hard to do, but we wanna turn our body without backpedaling. We wanna to turn to shuffle one way or the other, and if you remind them to keep their shoulders down, they don't do this number. Oh my gosh, I went backwards. Oh no, the ball's in front of me. All right, so moving backwards is hard, and being able to maintain position at the same time, but they need to learn it even at an early age. If your kids are too young to really learn how to be able to do it and get the feet right, you can have them catch. So let's catch first. When you catch, you should look like you passed. In other words, I don't want this. I want this, okay? When you catch, check yourself. Are you facing coach? Is your body forward? Am I like I was in the bleachers? Ready? Good. You can give it to me after and we'll just kind of, ready? Shuffle back. Okay, did your shoulders come up or stay down? Ready? Just think about it. You're good. Shoulders down, shuffle, catch. See how you did this? So that meant your feet weren't in the right place. This is hard to do, but doing this part is definitely worth it. Good, she had to shuffle, change directions twice. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Drop and square, good, way to square up. Now I want KK to come back. And now, think of it like bloody knuckles, the drill we did earlier where we use those setter touches to push. Now they're gonna push the ball back to coach with their fingertips open. The goal is to not be doing this, right? We wanna be practicing squaring up our feet with the ball. So I'm gonna go down here because it's just easier for me, but you don't have to. And I'm just trying to roll a ball that makes them shuffle. Yes, that was perfect, KK. Nice. 
Excellent. I'm checking their feet, their body position. Is their bottom backwards? Um, do any of you know how some people sit on their heels and bring their bottom in? Can you demonstrate that a little bit? This would be the incorrect way, but common. So KK, see if you can demonstrate when you get there. Um, so they kind of, she can't even do it wrong. So you'll see, that, that's good, that's good. I don't want to change your habits. So what they'll do is, a couple things they'll do wrong where you just roll, is they'll shuffle and like drop. I don't even know how they do it. They drop this way, and so their bottom goes down, and then they don't have, we really want them to pull their bottom away from their hand. And to get them to do that, they have to, sometimes they don't do a wide enough, so they're like this. So they need a wide, pla a wide stance, and their weight needs to be forward. That was excellent, okay? My girls are ready to pass. Your team might not be. It's okay if you just do the rolling part. We're gonna actually pass them. That isn't ready. She did the same exact footwork she did in the last two drills. That was perfect. Same thing, don't drop your platform. Good. Obviously right now I'm on the same side of the net as them, so this is easier. When I go to the other side, I as the coach will move where I am because the, the common mistake is for the passer to face where the ball is coming from. And we don't want them facing the server or the other team. We want them facing our target. Therefore, in reality, if I am in server C, if they're serving at me, and I'm on the left side of the court, this is the most common thing you will see. The server is directly over there, so I'm like this. So server receive should really look like this, where the ball's coming at me. And I know it seems weird, but that's how we set as well. And in staying in a straight line, everything becomes more simplified. So instead of taking a ball straight on and having to change its direction, where now I've added some spin, I receive it at an angle, the storm. I receive that crazy ball, and it's easy to calm it because I'm in a straight line and I know the direction that I'm going. So, we good? We would do the same drill from left to right. And the difference here is just that because they're in a different position, the way that they, sh they face target will change. So this one can be hard if she shuffles to a ball over here because as she shuffles, what does she need to do? Round the ball to face her target. You ready? I'm not gonna do hard ones, but make sure that last step that you turn the foot in to your target and that you don't leave a back leg. I call that a trail leg. Okay, ready? Very good. Using our legs, bottom back. You're a little too close to the ball. You need to back up, okay? Go ahead and go. Shuffle, turn, drop, bring it down, calm it a little more. That's in your platform. Don't drop your platform. Good, see this is harder to do because they have to wrap around the ball. Good, and that's pretty decent. And she's got her, her top was square, her bottom wasn't. These are all normal, age appropriate challenges that you just keep reminding them of to work on. All right, y'all take a break. All right, one of the biggest issues we have in vo with volleyball with coaches is getting kids to receive that first ball. Um, and a lot of times, like I demonstrated earlier, they over move or they give power to the ball. And what I tell them is that we want to calm the ball. Use this motion from the sideline in a game, I'll be like, calm the ball. We want to bring it down. We want to take all the spin and all the movement, and all the craziness and take control of it and calm it down. Zechariah 10, 11 tells us the Lord will cross the storm and calm its turbulence. And the word turbulence in the dictionary even says violent movements of wind and air. And so in life, whether it's school, the world, um, our team, the game, um, our family life, the Lord can come in through these storms and calm the turbulence. He can actually take that violent wind and that inconsistent shifting and he can put a piece on it. So what I tell them with calming the ball, and that's the words I use, we, you know, we want to give a peace and a calmness to the ball that came at us, no matter whether it was top spin or if it was floating, if it was aggressive as it wasn't, what we want to do is take that ball and calm it and we don't force it, we redirect it. And so taking control and taking a little peace and calmness, also the game can get very exciting no matter what's happening. We have an ability to come in something overly intense and overly powerful and calm it and give it a purpose that gives us a little more control.